Doing all right. Good to see a friendly face. Uh, I'm going to do a quick introduction, Ryan, and then uh, I'm going to give you the stage. Client success manager at CQL, one of our favorites, as I said, full service digital agency, team of industry professionals, design, development, implementation, world-class e-commerce solutions, platforms that they support, Salesforce, Shopify Plus, Magento, Work Area, and more. And a few clients just to mention, uh, ELF Cosmetics, PetSmart, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, Escalade Sports, if uh, I think, which is I, I know from my own experience, they have a ton of different brands, whether you're playing pool or uh, any other sport, really. It seems like Escalade Sports has a site for it. Stride Right, Paula's Choice, Shoe Show. Uh, Ryan's going to be talking about a few tips for a successful replatform. I know this is during the as a, you know, during the, the journey as an entrepreneur, and certainly an e-commerce entrepreneur, there will be a moment in time where you might be considering a replatforming, and uh, Ryan's going to share what to look for. Ryan, the stage is yours. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. I really appreciate the introduction. Um, we'll go ahead and share my screen. Michael, let me know if for some reason it does not look right, please. We're good to go. We are go good ahead to go. See that? All right. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Uh, for your time today, we're going to be talking about tips for a successful replatform. Uh, just a little bit about me. My name is Ryan Donahue. I'm a client success manager at CQL. I've been in the e-commerce space for about seven years now. I've ha um, had hands-on experience with probably about 100 pl different platforms now um, in the e-commerce you know, ecosystem, and I've evaluated many more. I first cut my teeth in the e-commerce space um, in an online cosmetic company, so I started client-side where um, that brand in particular grew, grew over 25 million um, in online revenue, and they made the Inc. 500 fastest growing companies list twice. That was a, a pretty uh, formational experience. Uh, a friend of mine calls it, I got my, my master's degree in, uh, in e-commerce uh, during that experience. And that was where I you know, got to see everything end to end from, from marketing all the way down through to pick back and ship. And that's where I got my, my exposure to a first, my first replatform, which was going from Magento Enterprise 1.x to Shopify Plus. I also got to see firsthand how a lot of different agencies worked um, and also evaluated a few different there. So as, as a client success manager at CQL, my day-to-day my, my -day, um, is talking with clients to help them build out their strategic roadmaps and execute on that vision with our experts that we have in-house at CQL. Um, replatforms is a very, maybe the most common conversation that we're, we're running into today. We're definitely having it on a weekly basis, if not multiple times discussing, um, when to replatform, why replatform and looking at digital transformation, technology initiatives, um, across the board. Um, just really quick, just to say, you know, a shout out to the great clients that we work with. Um, they are the ones that allow us to continue to refine our skills, learn and grow, and you know, really become the experts that we are in the replatforming space. Um, just to tee up the conversation of like why are brands replatforming to just kind of tee this up a little bit. We do we see this the kind of I break it down into three pillars. And I think visually I'd love to show this in much more of a um, a Venn diagram, if you will, or a triangle of sorts, because really columns don't do it justice. These are, these are very integrated and there's a lot of overlap. I think typically, um, you know, you're either looking at reducing costs and increasing the ROI of that spend. You're looking at digital transformation and driving growth initiatives, or you're, you're looking at your legacy technologies that you have and the liabilities associated with those. Now, the reason I said Venn diagram, highly connected, is that I think the conversation probably, you know, from our perspective, typically is going to start in one of these categories. I'll start with, you know, just a quick example of digital transformation. You want to completely overhaul and change the customer experience on your site. That may be a complete redesign. It might be going headless or omni-channel BOPIS type functionality. And very quickly, you're going to start looking at what technology in your ecosystem that you have today which then is going to re bring the conversation back to costs, your tech stack. Um, what kind of investment do you make? Do you continue? Do you want to bring this vision to life on your current tech stack, or should you be investing in a new platform? Are there efficiencies? Are there things that can happen? Um, and it may be a new, more modern platform where you're going to have efficiency gains. It's going to have more features. It's going to be, you know, a better experience for your customers. So I'm not going to go through all of these today. You can kind of read through those. Um, but 
that's that is very much the conversation that we're seeing um, today. So just kind of moving into the tip. So once you've actually made that decision, you're making the jump, you want to go ahead and replatform. Um, got six tips that we're going to talk about here today. Um, the first is discovery. Uh, discovery is the key to your success. So the discovery process is is really the time to get alignment on key business drivers, pain points, KPIs um, across all team members, your partner as well as internally. Align on your requirements. Like what are your true right here, I have it kind of listed. Aligning on true requirements. What are the true requirements that are actually going to bring your business ROI that are worth doing? Um, it's gonna you're gonna get an opportunity to talk through your three and five year plan, even if you're not doing it as part of the initial launch. Um, and you're going to be evaluating your ecosystem. How does everything work? Um, this is a time with, you know, most often you are looking at agency partners. So it's time to validate and align on your scope, your timelines and budgets and making sure things are realistic, identifying risks, uh, maybe change management, other things, but getting full team alignment across all parties. Um, it's also a great way to mitigate, mitigate risk uh, because the more that your, your partner knows about you, and how everything works, the more successful you're going to be, the more accurately they can give you timelines and budgets um, to work from. Number two is know your data. Um, I, I want to give a shout out to our, our CTO, Doug Vandenhoek at CQL, because he's he really kind of was one of the ones that helped me understand the true value of an ecosystem map and documenting and knowing your data as it relates to how your business, specifically how your e-commerce platform works and functions on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, these ecosystem maps can visually show um, how, like where are all your touch points? What are your system of records? Um, where is the data flowing? And making sure everything is being accounted for. That's extremely important as you're going into um, a replatform process. It's going to allow you to help you know, as it relates to a replatform specifically, it's going to help you visualize your both your current state and your future state. Um, and I can definitely attest to how if you have a current state ecosystem app that you kept up to date, how much more quickly that's going to help your partners get up to speed, ask more pointed questions and really get an understanding of how everything works. Um, if you don't have one, though, obviously you, know, you can get one built. I do highly recommend that you have one current state, future state. It's definitely a living document. It can help with change management as you're adding new tools or replacing other tools in your ecosystem as time goes on, but strongly recommend that. Um, it also helps just on an ongoing basis, retain knowledge and align, align teams, both not just your partner, but also internally. If your lead architect leaves or your head of e-commerce leaves and they maybe you know, were, they knew all that, knew, knew about that, random job that dropped an, a file on a server somewhere that got picked up by your paid media, paid media, paid media team. Um, you know, you don't want to lose that knowledge. You want to have a full picture and, and you want to know how, how your systems work. So definitely recommend fully understanding your data and having an ecosystem map. Um, third, I would say challenge the status quo. You are, you've been doing things a long time, a certain way. Why are you doing them that way? You're going to have to rebuild everything from scratch on another platform. Why not take a step back, align on your processes, and try to simplify where you can. Look at the, the core out-of-the-box functionality the platform that you're going to move to is providing. Can you adhere to those models? And if you can't, okay, great, customize it. But challenge some customizations of, you know, is the ROI there? Maybe you have to do it, just nature of the beast. Maybe the ROI is not there, but you just have to do it for business purposes. The CEO says you have to do it, whatever the reason. I think it's, it's a great time to evaluate and, and challenge the status quo. Um, just to give some examples of this, uh, there are kind of two lenses to view this in. I would say one is more process driven. So let's say maybe you, hey, we don't have a PIM today. We realize in discovery, we need to have a PIM. We can't really do that quite yet, so that's, that's a phase two thing. Um, but you, you've identified it and you've challenged the way you manage your product data. Maybe you need to change from, you know, Sobos for tax provider to Avalara in your change over and maybe you want to modify your returns process. The other lens, I would say, is more about feature sets. So, and this, this maybe comes out more as you're coming up with your feature requirements or maybe in the UX process, but let's say um, it, maybe an easy, an easy example is let's think about product cards on a PLP. 
um, and you have a, a quick add to cart overlay on the card, or you have a wish list icon, and you're trying to figure out can we simplify you know, our product cards, um, and maybe tip 3.1, if you're in the process of replatforming and you haven't started things in your current site, add tracking on those things, have data inform those decisions. How many people are actually adding? Are they using your wish list? Yes or no. And are they actually adding to their wish list from the PLP? Um, do you need that functionality at, at that point in time? Or are they only doing it on the PDP? Same for you know a quick add to cart from your PLP card. Are they actually adding to cart from your PLP? Maybe they are, maybe they're not. Um, but if you don't know, empower yourself to make data-driven decisions by adding event tracking or something on the site to help help measure that and allow you to, to challenge the way you've done things in the past. Um, number four, build a launch strategy for launch day. Uh, launch day is the big day. You spent six months, nine months, maybe a year and a half building your site, depending on complexity and, and the scope of things to, to get there. And you wanna make sure it goes well. There's a lot of preparation that needs to occur. Um, make sure that you've done a thorough job. Uh, we call it a UAT period um, at CQL, a user acceptance um, and testing period where you've thoroughly tested the site. Make sure your team has been trained up to use the platform and knows how to manage the platform on a day-to-day -day basis um, for cutover. Uh, that can be pretty difficult. You're trying to maintain, not even maintain, you're trying to grow the business as it exists today on your current website. And now you're also having to learn at the same time and get trained up on how things are going to be working from launch day on. So that's why we, we do rec checklist and um, that sort of allowing as a guide to make sure you've thoroughly tested all aspects of the site and that you're ready for launch day. On a launch day call the morning of, recommend having multiple parties, you know, you and an agency, your agency partner that built the site, definitely. It may even make sense to have some other, uh, you know, team members on or third parties on the call. Maybe that's your, your OMS uh, team, depending on how work, if that's an external party, maybe your paid media team, um, you know, consider those external touch points that are outside of your core team. Um, you know, that's Google and like SEO post launch crawls. That's your paid media feeds. If you have an external, you know, paid team or even your internal paid team, do, are they aware that you're, that's just happening at 7 a.m.? Are they aware they need to update their feeds? Um, you know, resubmitting things to Google for reindexing, et cetera. All important things to be considered uh, for launch day. And then lastly, I'll just mention here is a, a hypercare period. So, you know, if your partner builds a site, you launch, let's say, 7 a.m. EST morning of on a Tuesday. Is the team around Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the rest of Tuesday, making sure people are going to be eligible, those that made that are that built the site in case something comes up. And it could be a small bug, could be something major, but you want to make sure that there's a plan in place that people are going to be around to support you beyond that initial handoff and go live for your customers. And I would say, you know, for at least a few days after the fact. Uh, number five, create a roadmap. Um, I have been guilty of this um, myself, which is having this idealistic, you know, you have this vision of the site. It's going to be the best thing ever. I've got all these things, all these ideas. It's going to beat all our competitors, all these, all this huge wish list of things we're going to do and achieve. Um, but that may not be realistic for the timeline and budget that you need to work under. Most, I would say most times it's not. So, be prepared to create yourself a roadmap. What should fit in phase one? So build it, launch it, start to use it. Now that you're actually in there and using it, you get a better understanding of things that you want to optimize more and you want to refine and improve on that can go into your phases two, three, four, et cetera. Your site is, is ever changing. Um, you're going to have it you know, forever and you're, you're always going to have a laundry list of things that you want to do. So have an MVP craft it into a longer term plan that has multiple phases, you know, your new budget cycle resets, maybe you can, you can tackle that thing later. And there's different ways to tackle that. You may have a quiz. Let's say you have a quiz on your site for product recommendations. You really want to have it. Maybe phase one is you have five questions and there's some static product recommendations based on those answers. Maybe phase two is you start driving those recommendations based on your CDP and your OMS and leveraging customer behavior to determine what products to show. But maybe you just, you don't need that robust functionality day one. So have realistic timelines that work, you know, for the capacity that your team can handle and feature sets and requirements that are actually gonna fit into your, your budgets. 
um, your last bullet there, there's your platform has thousands of features. Your team just realistically isn't going to be prepared to manage everything day one. So be open to a roadmap and be strategic about what makes it in at launch and what you want to push down the road for phase. And my last tip here, um, just start by kind of posing a question. You know, you're looking for a, a partner and determine what kind of agency partner you are looking for. Are you looking for a, an SI that you want to direct and kind of tell what to do, kind of augment your team and, you know, more of a, I got this mentality, help me achieve it and execute for me. Or are you looking for a team that can help provide recommendations, best practice, and can guide you along the way beyond launch in the long term, help you achieve your roadmap long term? Um, for me personally, ex I've experienced both of those. And you know, I far more recommend that you look for that experienced partner that can help long term. Um, that's just going to help hold both teams accountable. It's going to retain knowledge. You're going to retain history of the decisions that are made, and you're going to have efficiency gains in your delivery. So your your roadmap, the vision for your site, it's going to take years um, to achieve. You know, all the things it's, it's ever changing, and being able to find um, find a partner, learn your business, grow with you. So you can achieve things together and get the smart play here. Super, super valuable, Ryan. Thank you so much. Um, and this is again in the chat too. Like I, where Steve Rock says, this is super valuable. As I said, I mean, every merchant seems to go through this at one stage or another. Uh, you know, making the decision to replatform is not an easy one. You certainly want to have, you know, a good partner at your side to to you know help you along. Um, I wanted to ask a quick question. Uh, when you start considering, like, I'm imagining myself, I put myself in a merchant in the merchant's shoes, you know, you've decided now on a, on which platform you want to, uh, to migrate to, when mm -hmm. do you start considering the text, like your, your, your marketing or your growth stack beyond just the platform? Like I'm That's thinking for, I'm, I'm thinking like the app integrations, I'm thinking selfishly, where does gorgeous, like gorgeous. Fit conversation <laughs> or Clavio or attentive or Yapo or any of our other technology partners, especially within the Shopify ecosystem, like when, when and even the Magento ecosystem, the big commerce ecosystems, like when do those, when do those conversations happen? When is it important to have those conversations? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So when is, so the question is when, when is gorgeous fit into the mix? I like it. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, I think it depends on the, it depends on, your your plan right i think a lot of that comes out in discovery from for most people because you're mm -hmm. going to be you're going to be looking at um i mean at cql our discoveries include a tech ecosystem map so as part of that process like you're looking at the full picture mm -hmm. and it may be a conversation where we just me being like let's say i'm the client we, we really cannot handle swapping out customer service at the same time that we're handling this so of course, you know, it might just be like gorgeous is great. We demoed it you know, a month ago. We need to wait till we get live. And that's not about phase two thing. There's there's other scenarios where it might be like, you know, hey, we're our, our platform. We have Zendesk. I'm just going to stick on the customer service path. Like we hate Zendesk. It's painful not to pick on Zendesk. Sorry, Zendesk It's just, you know, whatever tool we have today in place for customer service. I just we don't like it. It doesn't work for us. As part of this change, we really need to have a much better, like that might be one of your KPIs and measurements for success. For right, project. right. In that okay. case, Gorgeous gets pulled forward, right? That that tool, in this case, customer service tool, gets pulled forward and maybe is a part of that initial build. And you're training customer service up because, you know, hey, Gorgeous integrates really well to Shopify. We chose Shopify. We want to make that work. So in short, depends on the merchant. It could be a part of the build process. It could be phase two. Just sort of depends on. It depends. It depends on a case by case. Well, that's super helpful to know. Uh, Ryan, always a pleasure. As I said, great to see a friendly face. Um, perfect. I was just going to ask, where can folks reach you? Yeah. So went a little long. Apologize. Didn't get to questions. Um, we will send this deck out to everyone that attended today. Um, and perfect. Free, feel free to reach out on LinkedIn or my email for any of the questions. Apologize. I went a little long and wasn't able to. Oh, don't apologize. I mean, like, listen, if it's great, if it's great content, we'll, we're happy to go over time. Uh, Ryan, uh, again, and for those in the audience, you know, we're, we're very careful with which partners we stand up here uh, at D2CX and CQL as, as the, the ones before Ryan uh, definitely make the cut. So um, Ryan, thanks as always for joining and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having us. Yeah. Our pleasure, Ryan.